In this episode, we install the ice and water barrier on our baby roof and we tell you why it's important to do it. So let's get to work. want to thank our friends at Hoover Wood for sending us two rolls of their ice barrier. We can start now our prep work. First off, uh, if you have a sunny spot, extend the, the material that you're going to install because with the heat, the addition becomes easier. Second thing is clean very well your roof. And third thing is check your zip tape. So if there are any perforations or anything that you need to fix, this is the time to do it. We built in zone seven. That means that we have very cold climate and we get tons of snow and tons of ice. So when you are in weather like this one, it's recommended to start with two layers of the ice barrier. So the first layer should be 18 inches, which is the half of the roll. So I already got it here. And what we're going to do next is we are going to run a chalk line at 18 inches to make sure that this one goes straight. By the way, it's very important to have it fold and go down at least one inch or two inches and that's to protect the border of the sheeting. In my case, I like to go a little bit longer. Why is it important to install a nice membrane? So here's the thing. Imagine that we are in winter and all of this is covered in snow. Now the house is right here and the house is heated. So all that heat from the house is going to start to melt the snow that we have at the end. That water is going to start flowing down, but then it gets colder out here. So it's going to freeze again. There are two problems with this. If the, if the roof has like any small cracks, when the water gets in and it becomes ice, it's going to start to, to expand and contract and it can start making that problem larger eventually. The other thing is that when when the water gets to the edge and it becomes ice, the ice is going to try to go everywhere and it can try to get under the sheeting and then if that happens you now have a humidity problem inside the cavity of the roof. So by installing the membrane you are pretty much creating like a shield so that the water doesn't have a way to get in. So this is the time when you need to install your drip edge. In our case, we're not doing it right now because we are installing a solar roof that has special requirements and we're going to install it when we do that. But we have another video around there, you can look for it, where we do install a drip edge. Now, there are two ways of doing it. One thing is, as I have here already the, um, the ice membrane installed, you can put your drip edge. And the idea is that when you put the nails on it, the membrane is going to self heal and it's going to create a seal around the nails. The other way of doing it is before you install the membrane, you install the drip edge and then the membrane comes on top. So that's going to prevent any water from getting under the drip edge. Now, regardless of which one you use, which remember, it depends on your local code, regardless of which one you use, you should leave at least half an inch of gap in here. In our case, we prefer to leave one inch. And that's because water has static pressure and that's going to make the water want to wrap around and get uh, behind the drip edge. So if you leave this gap, water is going to drip straight down. When you have a vertical overlap, it's very important to have at least six inches of overlap. However, when you have the horizontal one, the recommended it's at least three inches. I like to follow the line that comes with the ice barrier because this is about four and a half inches. So if you are slightly misaligned, you still have some range to adjust. Here I have a gap that I need to cover. So I need to make sure that I cover this gap and that I have six inches on this side and six inches on this side. So I have already cut a piece that it's 18 inches wide. As far as how many rows of membrane you're going to need, it's important to understand the code requirement. We are in zone seven, so it's pretty cold area and the code says that we need to be at least 24 inches from the wall. Now. It doesn't specify exactly if the wall starts up here, out here, or if it's the interior border of the wall. So in my case, my wall is six inches. So to be on the safe side, I would do at least 30 inches of uh, membrane here. Now, something very important. Notice that I'm measuring horizontally. Do not measure following the diagonal because you're going to have a shorter distance. 
Now, that's what the code says. For cold areas, it's recommended to have at least 36 inches inside. In our case, we're going to do the membrane in the whole roof, just because we think that it's going to be better. But in, in uh, some areas, for example, hot climates, it might not be the best idea because the membrane also works as a vapor barrier. So check your local requirements to see what's best for you. So we are done with the installation of our ice barrier. Here are some final thoughts. First off, I, I think I mentioned it at the beginning, but a tip could be to extend the material and leave it in the sun. So it's going to become stickier. Now, what I would say is if you're working alone, this can be a pro and a con at the same time because it's going to be also stickier to work with. The second thing is when you have the backing paper, there are two things. The, the back part is pretty waxy, so there's a very high risk of people falling down and sleeping with it. So as soon as you're done with it, just throw it off the roof. And here is one important tip. So if you have the material, I recommend you to fold it, to discard it, because if you just do this, this is about two feet. No, sorry, this is about four feet. This is about eight feet. And the thing is, if you leave this one here, you're going to see that it's going to start expanding again and you'll end up with tons and tons and tons of volume of trash. So that's one tip I can give you. And finally, you should know that the uh, SIP system has two variants of the underlayment. The HT variant, it's, it stands for high temperature. That one is intended for uh, roofs that get really hot, like copper or slate and, and some others. And it can withstand up to 120 days exposed. So, so even if you're not using one of those roofs, but you will have it exposed for longer, that's a great idea. And this one is the standard one. So for this one, it's good for all shingles, regular standing seam can also work with this one. And this one can withstand 90 days exposed. I, I thought that the difference was that maybe one was thicker than the other, but the covering at the top is actually of a different material. And that's what makes it uh, a little bit more resistant. So that's what we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you like it, please consider giving us a like and, and subscribe to our channel. And finally, thank you so very much to our friends at SIP for uh, sending us the product for this video. <music>